the angel spoke to the women. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has been raised. He is not here, he has been raised. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all rise and begin the service by singing hymn number, the first hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah.
join in saying the prayer of purity together. Almighty Mighty God, God unto whom all our hearts are open, open, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing for the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people you may kindly sit or kneel Let us all join in saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow people in thought, word, and deed. In the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorrow and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Savior Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. Hear what St. John says. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the expiation of our sins. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, 
have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through jesus christ our lord collect of the day today being the easter sunday the theme assigned for our meditation is resurrection celebrating the joy of salvation resurrection celebrating the joy of salvation let us pray god of our very being from everlasting to everlasting we thank and praise you for your unending love towards the whole world in sending your son jesus christ into this world to save the world through his death and resurrection we are grateful for your life giving power which broke the evils of sin on the cross and raised jesus christ our lord from death as a gift for our salvation empower us to continue to celebrate life with your creation We pray this in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Kindly be seated. The ministry of the Word of God. Let us listen to the Old Testament scripture reading. Today's Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 14 verses beginning from 5 through 31 Exodus chapter 14 verses beginning from 5 through 31 When the king of Egypt was told that the people had escaped he and his officials changed their minds and said what have we done We have let Israelites escape and we have lost them as our slaves. The king got his war chariot and his army ready. He set out with all his chariots including the 600 finest commanded by their officers. The Lord made the king stubborn and he pursued the Israelites who were leaving triumphantly. The Egyptian army with all the horses chariots and drivers pursued them and caught up with them where they were camped by the red sea near phi hahirot and bal zephon when the israelites saw the king and his army marching against them they were terrified and cried out to the lord for help they said to moses weren't there any graves in egypt did you have to bring us out here in the desert to die look What you have done by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we tell you before we left that this is what would happen? We told you to leave us alone and let us go on being slaves of the Egyptians. It would be better to be slaves there than to die here in the desert. Moses answered, "Don't be afraid. Stand your ground and you will see what the Lord will do to save you today." you will never see these egyptians again the lord will fight for you and all you have to do is keep still the lord said to moses why are you crying out for help tell the people to move forward lift up your walking stick and hold it out over the sea the water will divide and the israelites will be able to walk through the sea on dry ground i will make the egyptians so stubborn that they will go in after them and i will gain honor by my victory over the king his army his chariots and his drivers when i defeat them the egyptians will know that i am the lord 
the angel of God who had been in the front of, um, of the army of Israel moved and went to the rear. The pillar of cloud also moved until it was between the Egyptians and Israelites. The cloud made it dark for the Egyptians but gave light to the people of Israel and so the armies could not come near each other all night. Moses held out his stick and his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind. It blew all night and turned the sea into dry land. The water was divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with the walls of water on both sides. The Egyptians pursued them and went after them into the sea with all their horses, chariots and drivers. Just before dawn, the Lord looked down from the fire, pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw them into a panic. He made the wheels of their chariots get stuck so that they moved with great difficulty. The Egyptians said, The Lord is fighting for the Israelites against us. Let's get out of here. The Lord said to Moses, Hold out your hand over the sea and the water will come back over the Egyptians and their chariots and drivers. So Moses held out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the water returned to its normal level. The Egyptians tried to escape from the water but the Lord threw them into the sea. The water returned and covered the chariots, the drivers and all the Egyptian army that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them was left. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground with the walls of water on both sides. On that day, the Lord saved the people of Israel from Egyptians and the Israelites saw them lying dead on the seashore. When the Israelites saw the great power with which the Lord had defeated the Egyptians, they stood in awe of the Lord and they had faith in the Lord and his servant Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we all rise for the responsive reading. Our responsive reading this morning is taken from Psalm 118, verses 14 to 29. Psalm 118, verses 14 to 29. The Lord makes me powerful and strong. He is my savior. Listen to the glad shouts of victory in the tents of God's people. The Lord's mighty power has done it. His power has brought us victory. His mighty power in battle. I will not die, but I will live and tell what the Lord has done. He has punished me severely, but he has not let me die. Open the gates of temple for me. I will go in and praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. What a wonderful day the Lord has given us. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us success, Lord. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hands, start the festival and march around the altar. You are my God, and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give, give, give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord, because he is good, and his love is eternal.
kindly be seated. Let us listen to the epistle reading. The epistle lesson for this morning is taken from Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 11. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 11. You have been raised to life with Christ. So set your hearts on things that are in heaven where Christ sits on his throne at the right side of God. Keep your minds fixed on things there, not on things here on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your real life is Christ, and when he appears, then you too will appear with him and share his glory. You must put to death then the earthly desires at work in you, such as sexual immorality, indecency, lust, evil passions, and greed, for greed is a form of idolatry. Because of such things, God's anger will come upon those who do not obey him. At one time, you yourselves used to live according to such desires when your life was dominated by them. But now, you must get rid of all these things, anger, passion, and hateful feelings. No insults or obscene talk must ever come from your lips. Do not lie to one another, for you have put off the old self with its habits and have put on the new self. This is the new being which God, its creator, is constantly renewing in his own image in order to bring you to a full knowledge of himself. As a result, there is no longer any distinction between Gentiles and Jews circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarians, savages, slaves, and free men. But Christ is all, and Christ is in all. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel, Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses beginning from 1 to 10. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses beginning from 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as Sunday morning was dawning, Mary Magdalene and other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel spoke to the women. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly now and tell his disciples he has been raised from death and now he is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. So they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid and yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. This is the Gospel of Christ.
I wish you all a happy Easter. All will say, respond saying thank, thank you. I request the congregation to kindly stand and greet one another. Feel free to move around and say happy Easter. While we do this, I request uh, uh, you to kindly move a little forward because there are chairs here in the front line and third line. When I loudly say, Jesus is risen, and I expect your response like, uh, He is risen indeed, yes. three times, we raise up our voice and hands and glorify God by saying this. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Indeed, He is risen. All will say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Dearly beloved people of God, we are really thankful to God Almighty for the wonderful time God has given us to experience the mighty power of resurrection on this particular day. And we have a special speaker, Reverend Dr. Park M. T. Samuel, on behalf of the congregation, all the worshippers and all the clergy, I very humbly thank him for accepting our invitation and thank him for his gracious presence to minister the precious word of God. Reverend Dr. Park M. T. Samuel is the director of HMI, Henry Martin Institution. I understand... Uh, we have students uh, of Henry Martin Institution from our congregation. Also, all those who would like to do the study in theology, you can approach him. And uh, he'll be gracious enough to give admission in his college. And, and I heard that uh, few of our congregation members who have crossed uh, 50, 60 years have joined the study for theology. I thank him for accepting them. Let's all prepare ourselves uh, to meditate the precious word of God by singing the gradual hymn, Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. After singing of this hymn, I invite uh, Reverend Dr. Park M. T. Samuel, the renewed and international preacher, to lead us in the meditation of the word of God.
consecrate our thoughts, our action and our speech. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I greet all of you in the name of the risen Lord who is risen and brought us the hope. The meditation for us on this special day is resurrection, celebrating the joy of salvation. From hopelessness to hope. There are many surprises that comes with Easter. But I would like to bring to you the four surprises. The first one is unbelievable events. We start with the Passion Sunday a couple of weeks ago where it is like a manifesto of an election campaign where we had a new vision, new mission, a new understanding and then the new leader was proposed two weeks ago on March 17th. Then we came on to the Palm Sunday where it was applause, where it was a great joy, a campaign, a political move. And then it was followed by trial, encounters, betrayal, crucifixion and then today we are faced with resurrection. Unbelievable events that happened preceding to the resurrection, the Easter. One of the biggest unbelievable event is the men ran away, the women stood. The men ran away and the women stood. I think that is why symbolically we had women lighting the cross. That is the first unbelievable event, the first surprise. The second surprise is unlikely witnesses. If you look at that, he says, go and tell. He is not asking his first disciples, he is saying to the women, go and tell to all my disciples. They were the first evangelist or the gospel proclaimer. Those days being a patriarchal society, it is not so credible witness for women to be a witness to a, a mega event. But it is an unlikely witnesses. That is the surprise, second surprise. The third surprise is unexpected grace. He says, go and tell to the disciples, and the A and D and to Peter he is not having that big confidence or hope but still he extends his grace saying that go and tell all the disciples and also to Peter and also to the Peter so that is unexpected grace finally the fourth surprise is unconvincing finish if you look at the gospel of Mark chapter 16 scholars say that the chapter 16 usually ends with verse 8 from verse 9 to 6 or 9 to 20 is kind of a later addition because it was not finishing properly so later it was added but then if you look at verse 8 it says so they went out quickly and fled from the tomb for they were trembled and were amazed and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. It closes there. Unconvincing end or a conclusion to the entire thing. The four surprises, unbelievable events, unlikely witnesses and the unexpected grace and unconvincing finish. This is how Easter begins. With all these four surprises, the message of Easter comes to us so powerfully to say loudly with our chant he is risen and he is risen indeed the message of resurrection we get it from gospel of matthew chapter 28 verse 1 to 10 the gospel reading been read to us very recently i happened to go to mumbai and to stay in the ymca international at bombay central and then just opposite that there is a methodist center I have a very good friend called Dr. Hanjan Mani who was a, a treasurer of the Methodist Church for a so long, maybe around 30, 40 years. He was a central treasurer of the Methodist Church. 
And I thought, since I'm just, uh, you know, close, I will walk across to meet him and say hello. So I went across, went to his home, rang the bell, and then his wife opened the gate and then she said, I came to meet Dr. Hanjan Mani, and she says, he is no more. I said, where? He is no more. It was a big shock to me. Very big shock to me. I said, you mean he went out somewhere or he went for a camp? He says, he is dead. He is no more. When people pass us away, we say no more. But we see the message of the resurrection is not no more. It is, he is not here. There is a big shift from no more to not here. So it is no longer no more. He is not here is the message. He is not here. He is gone. The second message that comes to us directly is do not be afraid. Don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. Do not be afraid. He is risen. Rejoice. Rejoice. These are the four words. He is not here, do not be afraid, he is risen and rejoice. Very, very straightforward message that we get from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 to 10. The result of the resurrection we see it in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 11. That has been read to us from the epistle reading. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 11, it starts like this, if... If then you were raised, simply use that word if followed by then. If you are, if you were raised with Christ, then. That is the result of the resurrection. It says, if you are raised with Christ, then seek things which are above. If you are raised with Christ, then set your minds on things above. If you are raised with Christ, then you will also appear in glory. These are the three ifs. That is the result of resurrection. If you also been raised with Christ, then seek things which are above. If you are also raised with Christ, then set your mind on things above. And if you are also raised with Christ, then you also will appear in glory and in Christ there is no Greek, there is no Jew, there is no circumcised or non-circumcised, there is no barbarians, there is no slave nor free, but in Christ we are all, all in all. That is the result of the resurrection. Equality, justice and peace. If you are raised with Christ, then seek things are which above. If you are raised with Christ, then set your mind on things above. If you are raised with Christ, then you will also appear in glory. The result of the resurrection. The message of the resurrection is, He is not here. Do not be afraid. He is risen. And rejoice. The result is, if and then. I hope you follow it. The power of the resurrection is expressed in Old Testament lesson, Exodus chapter 14. And then Exodus we read that 5 to 31 that has been read to us. It says, they walked on the dry land. There was a, a great surprise for them being chased. But I would like to compare these passages with Paul's encounter with King Agaripa, where he goes and then he challenges him. He says, King Agaripa, you may understand what I am trying to say. And maybe not many will understand. And I waited for you to come to judge so that I can express who I am. And the same thing is being expressed in the Philippines chapter 3. And in the entire chapter there are three passages. The first passage I would like to bring it to your attention. The first one is, it says, chapter 3 verse 5 it says, I am from the stock of the Israel of the tribe of Benjamin. The Hebrew of the Hebrew. Concerning the law, I am a Pharisee. Concerning my zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness, which is 
I am, you know, blameless. A kind of pride Paul has. He says, first of all, I am from the stock of the Israel. The pride of ancestry. I think many of us take our power or our strength from our ancestry. I am from this particular family, from that particular family, or I am from this region, I am from that region. And we like to give our entire history. We like to, you know, propose saying that this is what I come from. I am from this particular lineage. The pride of ancestry. And Paul says, I have that ancestry. The secondly, he says, concerning the law or where I studied, my academics, the pride of orthodoxy. He says, I am from this particular school of law. I learned this law and I am a Pharisee. I can do any kind of interpretation. The pride of orthodoxy. Then he is also saying, in persecuting the people or people or the church, I was zealous. So he was talking about his activity, the pride of activity. And finally he says, I am blameless. The pride of morality. He says, that is my strength. That is my power. King Agaripa, from this background I come. Pride of ancestry, the pride of orthodoxy, the pride of activity, and the pride of morality. He says, from that particular background or with this kind of introduction, I am going to speak to you, King Agaripa. But in the book of, or in the letter to Philippines, he says in chapter 3, Yet, all this ha I have, with all this background, I count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus, my Lord. He says, my gain, my profit is my Lord. All these things, this fourth thing that he has narrated, he said, the pride of orthodoxy, the pride of ancestry, the pride of morality, and the pride of activity is a loss in front of the risen Lord. He counted all these things as a loss. Otherwise, his power was coming from such a background. The people of Israel, they also had that kind of a power. And they said, we can run on our own. But when they are faced with the sea, they have to depend on the Lord. They say, whatever we thought as a gain, we count it as a loss. Then they can walk across the dry land. So, friends, the power of resurrection is to count everything as a loss for the risen Lord. Because the risen Lord is my gain. Finally, the song of resurrection. The song of resurrection. That is in the book of Psalms. 118 verses 14 to 29 it says the Lord is my strength and my song the Lord is my strength and my song I shall not die but live that is the greatest song the Lord is my strength and song I shall not die and but live that is the message of the Easter I gave you four surprises Unbelievable events, unlikely witnesses, unexpected grace, unconvincing finish. Then the message comes as he is not here. Do not be afraid. He is risen and rejoice. The result is, if you are also raised with Christ, then seek things which are above. If you are also raised with Christ, set your minds on things above. If you are also raised with Christ, then you will also appear in glory. Then the power of the resurrection is count everything loss for the gain of risen with Christ. The pride, the pride of ancestry, the pride of orthodoxy, the pride of activity and the pride of morality. Then we can sing the song of Easter saying that the Lord is my strength and song I shall not live but I shall not die but live. To conclude, let me ask you three questions. I gave you four surprises, the four messages, and the three questions I'd like to leave with you. Is the Easter sorrow? On Sunday morning, the women go to the tomb crying. Why are we crying? Are we not continued to cry when challenges come? 
as though we have lost the hope. We cry. Why are we crying? That is the Easter sorrow. The second one is, what are we searching? People engage us or people say that be a seeker or be a searching people. Don't be a believer. We continue to search. What are we searching? Why are we crying? What are we searching? Finally, how are we surrendering? Just like Paul surrendered all his background. How are we surrendering? Three questions. Why are we crying? What are we searching? And how are we surrendering? What are we going to surrender to Christ? Very recently, on a iftar, a group of students from Islamic student organization, it is called SIO, they came to the institute and we had a iftar party. They requested us, why don't you show us a film on Christ, the passion of Christ, Mel Gibson's. We said, okay, we will show you. It was a very strange question that been or request came from an Islamic student organization, hundreds of them. So we filmed them. And when the real passion of Christ, the crucifix was portrayed, many began to cry, many began to shout and say that, what? Because a Muslim can't believe the prophet of God going through such a humiliation. So they were in tears. Whenever Jesus was falling, they were all getting a kind of uh, emotion. And suddenly one of the students, he stood up and he said, don't worry, don't worry, he will get up. I have seen this. In between the film, he said, don't worry, he will get up. I have seen this. Though it was very physical or very real to the film and the context, for me, Easter is only that. Don't worry. He will get up. He will get up. Don't cry. Don't search. And how we are going to surrender. What are we crying for? What are we searching for? What are we surrendering? Friends, let me remind you once again. The four surprises. Unbelievable events. Unlikely witnesses. Unexpected grace. Unconvincing finish. This is the surprise of Easter. The message of Easter is, he is not here. We can't say he is no more. He is not here. Do not be afraid. He is risen. Rejoice. The result of the resurrection is, if you are also raised, then what happens? It is in Colossians. Kindly read. The power of resurrection is not in our pride. The power of resurrection is in the risen Lord. You can count everything else as a loss. The song of the resurrection is, The Lord is my strength and song. I shall not die, but live. The three questions that I would leave with you is, Why are we crying? What are we searching? How are we going to surrender? As the film reminds us, as the young Muslim boy says, Don't worry, he will get up. That's why we sing, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, he holds my future. And life is worth the living, just because he lives. Shall we sing?
risen. He is risen indeed. May God bless. Amen. In the light of what we have just heard, may we all affirm our faith. be seated. Let us listen to the announcements. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Let's all say hallelujah once again. Hallelujah. Happy Easter and God's blessings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ our regular Easter service will be held at 8.30 a.m. Reverend Dr. Yu Daniel is the preacher we thank Reverend Dr. Park Kim Samuel for the wonderful Easter message fellowship breakfast is being served immediately after the worship service request all of you to participate. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our members, volunteers, the fellowships, Sunday school, youth, women's and men's who helped to put up a fantastic show, taking care of the stage and other physical arrangements. I would also like to thank 
our pastors, Reverend Dr. Yu Daniel and Reverend Sumalata, for coordinating the whole program. Special thanks to the choir and its director for the wonderful musical performance. Thank you all once again. God bless us all. I would like to thank the committee, the pastorate committee for the physical arrangements and uh, also we have with us students from ACTC, Ms. Um, Pastor Sandeep and Pastor Emmanuel Raj. Thank you for being here with us to assist us in the Holy Communion. Let us intercede with the Lord. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We give thanks and pray for the church throughout the world, our own church, Church of St. John the Baptist, our diocese, our acting moderator and deputy moderator, Right Reverend Reuben Mark, our moderator's commissary, Right Reverend Dr. K. Padmarao, our presbyter in charge, Reverend Dr. U. Daniel, our presbyter, Reverend Sumalata. Strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we and all who confess your name may unite in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks and pray for the nations of the world, our own nation, all men in their various callings, Give wisdom to all in authority, especially the President, Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers, and Chief Ministers of all states. Direct this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and of peace, that men may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks and pray for the local community, our families and friends. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors in Christ, that we may serve him in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, those who mourn, those without faith. We give thanks and pray for all who serve and relieve them. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commemorate the departed. We commend all people to your unfailing love. 
that in them your will may be fulfilled and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom lord in your mercy accept these prayers for the sake of your son our savior jesus christ amen let all stand to receive the peace dearly beloved people of god we are the body of christ jesus in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life the peace of the lord be always with you Let's all greet one another by saying shalom. Shalom, shalom. Let us offer ourselves and our thanks offering to God Almighty by singing the offertory hymn. He holy choir he sons of light <laughs>
have a special thanks offering offered by the people of God for the glory of God Almighty. Enoch uh, Wesley Chavili is remembering a birthday. We wish you a happy birthday. May God continue to bless you and strengthen you. Mrs. Gone Sarah Naina has offered special thanks offering for the blessings received from God Almighty at the workplace. May God continue to bless you with in this great uh, new responsibility at the workplace. Remembering the birthday, why Pranvi Kristalin has all offered special thanks offering. We wish, wish you happy birthday, Pravani. May God bless you and strengthen you. On behalf of the pastorate committee, I welcome all the congregations for this morning sunrise service. Special welcome to all the uh, new guests who have joined us to glorify God in and through this great uh, resurrection service. I see uh, new faces in our midst, uh, people from different congregations and different places. May God bless you and may God strengthen you. Let us pray. O oh God, the source of blessings, you being the source of blessings, you have offered uh, thy begotten Son as a precious gift uh, to us to redeem us from the bondage of sins. Gracious, loving Father, as we all celebrate this great day of resurrection as Easter festival, May this day of resurrection bring a new resurrection experience in our personal lives. Lord, anoint all of us and strengthen all of us, Lord, to witness thy resurrection in this world as you have commissioned thy disciples to communicate, to spread the news of the great uh, good news of thy resurrection. Gracious, loving Father, I pray for all the worshippers this morning and very specially, Lord, thy poor people who were unable to attend the worship service this morning. Continue to bless everyone, Lord, all the worshippers, Lord. Bless everyone with good health and peace and harmony. You said on the, thy resurrection, peace be unto thee. With this great good news of peace in our personal lives, as we move forward in this world, and enter into this world with the mighty message of resurrection. Strengthen us, lead us, anoint us to glorify thy name alone in and through our life journey. Gracious, loving Father, accept this thanks offering for thy wonderful ministry and open thy gates of heaven and bless everyone, Lord, and fill in everyone with the peace of resurrection in their lives. In the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. It is not only right, it is 
our duty and our joy at all times in all places to give you thanks and praise holy father heavenly king almighty and eternal god through jesus christ your only son our lord for he is your living word through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image for his glorious resurrection from the dead by his death he has destroyed death and by his rising again he has restored to us eternal life through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin giving him to be born as man to die upon the cross and to rise again for us through him you have made as a people for your own position exalting him to your right hand on high and sending upon us your holy and life giving spirit therefore we angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying holy 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 god god of love and might and and of all of your glory o sun be seated let's all continue to be in an attitude of prayer let us pray accept our praises heavenly father through your son our savior jesus christ and as we follow his example and obey his command grant that by the power of your spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood for in the same night that he was betrayed he took the bread and after giving you thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup he gave you thanks and gave it to them saying drink this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again Wherefore heavenly father With this bread and this cup we do this in remembrance of him we celebrate and proclaim his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven and we look for his coming in glory accept through him our great high priest this our sacrifice of thanks and praise and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty renew us by your spirit inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son jesus christ our lord with him and in him and through him by the power of the holy spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven we worship you father almighty in songs of everlasting praise blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever amen 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ Jesus because we all share in the one as our Savior has taught us so we pray Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to the time of trial but deliver us from evil all the kingdom the power and the glory are yours Amen. as we all prepare ourselves to take part in the holy communion of the lord let's all join and say the prayer of humble approach let us pray we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up crumbs under your table but you are the same lord whose nature is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son jesus christ and to drink his blood that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us amen Dearly beloved people of God, draw near with faith. Receive the precious body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his precious blood, which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
over, over. Jesus Christ said, He who eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. Having received the precious body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let's all stand for the thanksgiving prayer on page 17. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far of you, met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life we who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us in this hope that we have grasped. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Okay. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you now and forevermore. Closing, let's all glorify God by singing the recessional hymn on page 11. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hearts to heaven and voices raised. Sing to God a hymn of gladness. Sing to God a hymn of praise on page 11.
the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well, pleasing in his sight. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. He's still happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.